The Democratic congressman-elect Jared Moskowitz of Florida is just one of the loudest voices calling Santos out for his lies about his religion. In a tweet, Moskowitz wrote, quote, lying about your family almost being gassed in showers or being put in ovens in order to win an election is the lowest form of humanity. And I say that as someone whose grandmother was part of the Kindertransport out of Germany from the Holocaust. And Congressman-elect Moskowitz joins us now. Congressman-elect, thank you very much for, for joining us. Uh, your great-grandparents were killed in Auschwitz. Your grandparents barely escaped Europe on the Kindertransport there. What do you make of what Santos is claiming about his heritage? Yeah, good morning. Uh, so, I mean, look, you know, it starts with lying about your college. It starts about lying about your job. It goes to lying about a charity that he says he ran that he didn't run. Then it goes about lying that he lost employees in a mass murder uh, at Pulse nightclub in Florida. And it lies about his religion. And then his piece de resistance of his trafficking and lies is that, you know, he has family members that escaped the Holocaust. And so, you know, the, the idea that there is someone out there, someone who now serves in Congress, who thought electorally it would be significantly advantageous to him that he would come up with a lie that he had family members close to him, his grandparents, escape uh, one of the world's greatest tragedies. Uh, it, it's just the lowest form uh, of humanity, but not surprising, unfortunately, because this is what uh, folks on his side of the aisle have learned. They have learned this uh, from, you know, the leader of their party, uh, that mm. you can you can traffic in these lies and you can get away with them. Uh, uh, Ms. Moskowitz, stay with us because we want to play you um, Santos referring to himself as Jewish at the Republican Nas Jewish Coalition last month. And then hear his explanation when he was called out on his inconsistencies in a television interview just this week. Listen to this. Oh, good morning. Shabbat shalom to everybody. Um, and thank you for, for being here. Thank you for having me. My name is George Santos. Lee Zeldin really paved the way for all of us in New York. <laughs> Lee has served as an inspiration, as a friend, and as a leader for, for the Jewish folks in Congress and for all of us in this room by at point one point being just two members. So now we're going to be three. <laughs> Are you Jewish? We've got a letter that your campaign sent out earlier this year, which reads as follows. As a proud American Jew, I've been to Israel numerous times for educational, business, and leisurely trips. You said there in that letter that you are, quote, a proud American Jew. How do you, how do you explain that? My heritage is Jewish. I've always identified as Jewish. I was raised a practicing Catholic. I think I've gone through this. Even I've not not being raised a practicing Jew. I've always joked with friends and circles, even with in the campaign, I'd say, guys, I'm Jewish. Remember, I was raised Catholic. So, look, I understand everybody wants to nitpick at me. So, Mr. Moskowitz, would you at this point, having listened to what Santos said back in 2019, then listen to his kind of excuse for what he was saying, would you expect the Republican caucus in the House, on the Jewish members of Congress, to stand up and say to Kevin McCarthy, but actually all Republican members of Congress, to stand up and say to Kevin McCarthy, we can't sit this guy. The lies he's told are too egregious. Yeah, look, I, I, the Republican Jewish coalition, I know, has taken a position that he won't be invited to any of their events. But listen, as, as you all know, what's going on in Washington right now, the Republicans have been begging for power for years, saying everything the Democrats are doing wrong. Uh, and in their very first moment of having power, they're in complete disarray and can't decide on a speaker. Uh, and so you and I both know they're not getting rid of anybody at the moment uh, while each vote counts. Uh, but it really is a shame uh, that we have now someone walking the halls of Congress, the first person that I've ever heard of, uh, especially in politics, who, uh, you know, thought, you know what, I need to add to my resume. I need to add the fact that the only reason I exist on this planet is because my family escaped the Holocaust. I mean, it's just the most ridiculous thing you have ever heard of. Uh, and something tells me that this story is not finished, uh, that we're, we're going to hear more, because if you're willing to lie that your family members just, you know, narrowly escaped gas chambers, 
uh, then something tells me we're, we're going to find other stuff uh, as they uh, continue to unravel. Hey, Congressman-elect, it's uh, Sam Stein here. And look, us members of the tribe, we're, we, we welcome everybody, but there are limits probably in terms of appropriating your biography. Um, I'm curious, as a practical matter, what are like the avenues of recourse here? Um, obviously, the House has to vote uh, to expel a member, and we do not necessarily expect that uh, to be considered from a Republican-run House. But is it really just a matter of, did he lie on his financial disclosure form? Is that the one mechanism that could could prove vulnerable for Congressman Alex Santos here, because everything else seems to be in the hands of Kevin McCarthy. And as you outlined, uh, he wants the Santos vote for his speakership. Yeah, listen, I, I think, and again, there's probably stuff we don't know as people are combing through some of his financial reports uh, and, and other forms that he may have lied on that might have a legal repercussion. And so there's definitely, uh, I know people are looking into that, and I'm sure they might find that he has some legal exposure. It at least appears right now that that may be uh, the potential recourse. But look, we, we don't get a long time to serve in Congress, a, a, as we all know. And so, you know, he's going to be back on the ballot in two years. Uh, he's going to have an election uh, running for re-election in, in less than a year's time from now. Uh, and so, you know, look, there's no way the voters are, are going to stand for this. I mean, you know, again, this guy started with lying that, you know, he had employees die uh, at a at a mass shooting at the Pulse nightclub and thought, you know what, that's I got away with that. What else can I get away with? Uh, oh, let's try the Holocaust. And so, look, you know, the, we absolutely welcome people who uh, discover that they're Jewish, want to be Jewish. Uh, but there's no <laughs> such thing as being Jew and then ish with a hyphen in between. He stole that from the Jewish cookbook, by the way, uh, called Jewish Cooking. So, uh, you know, look, this guy's a clown. He doesn't belong in Congress. He cheapens, quite frankly, everybody else, Republicans and Democrats, uh, that are coming up to Washington to do the people's business that have worked really hard, earned uh, the ability to be there. And so, you know, we'll have to see where this where this story ends. But something tells me I, this is this is just the beginning of George Santos's uh, journey. Congressman-elect Jared Moskowitz, we think you are right that there will be more revelations in the days ahead. Thank you so much for we joining us. We may find us out that day. George says he was in the book of revelations. I mean, who knows? At this point, we seem to be on pace for that. Thank you so much for joining us this morning.